Hi, Deepu. Thanks for joining. Appreciate your time. Okay, we are really excited to, you know, uh, go through this uh, DevSecOps security, uh, uh, to know and learn how, how application security in DevOps works. And since you have that experience, right, we are really excited to, you know, listen from you on what will be the, uh, you know, uh, nature of work and uh, how this security works uh, mm -hmm. in DevSecOps and how, um, um, you know, what will be the roles and responsibilities for the application security engineer. Yeah. Okay. So please uh, proceed to introduce about yourself and, uh, you know, I'll start the session. Thank you. Sure, sir. So, uh, so my name is Deepu and uh, I am an application security engineer. So I, uh, I work with the security tools to make sure that, you know, the applications which are developed in any organization, they are secure. And I work very closely with the DevSecOps teams. So you guys are Dev DevSecOps guys, you know the tools used in DevSecOps. But uh, in today's session, I'm, I'm going to cover the security part of the DevSecOps. So I will tell you what are the tools that are used in the organizations in DevSecOps, how they are used, why they are used. So my agenda for today Hello, Deepu, you are on mute. I'm sorry. So uh, initially I was, uh, uh, did I mute in between or from the beginning it was a mute? Mm, uh, from uh, uh, since two minutes. Okay, okay. So, uh, so did I start the agenda? Did I, after starting the agenda, yes, it good. was muted. Yeah, so can my you, agenda. You start the agenda. Okay, okay. So my agenda for today's uh, session is to introduce application security, tell you what is application security, and what are the common terminologies that we use in application security, and then uh, what are the, how to build security into DevOps process, what are the tools that we use in the DevOps, and then implementing how we implement security into DevSecOps and uh, what are the common vulnerabilities that we have in uh, uh, in the application security. So uh, being this being the first session, so I will not go dive deep into the, uh, the security thing. I will be covering the basics, make sure that you know you all uh, understand what is security. Maybe in the, in the coming sessions, we will dive deep into the tools uh, and uh, we can see mo more deeply into that. So this session I will be covering the, uh, the the basics, high high level overview of what is security. And if you guys have any questions, just uh, stop me and you can ask me because I can't see the teams. Uh, if you raise your hand, I will not be able to see. So uh, I'm using a single screen. So just please feel free to stop me anytime in between. Okay, so application security, I think why we need application security. So definitely whenever as a, as a, as a individual, when you're using any applications, definitely you think of security, right? Uh, with that I'm application. Wrong. Pardon? No, thank you, Kanti. Okay. So when you're using any application, so you definitely whether it's a bank or any social media application, you just think that uh, this application is safe or not. That's, that's, that's a common uh, individual we think. The same way any organization when they are developing an application, they definitely make sure that you know their applications are safe and secure. 
and the custom the the, the customers who are using those applications their uh, information is safe so they have different teams they every organization have different teams application security teams which make sure the applications are safe they do different kinds of testing and uh, on those applications to make sure it is safe so uh, so it, you see there the applications that use you know different kinds of data like you know uh, if it is the healthcare industry the patient data if it is the banking or financial sector then they have financial information uh, the confidential information so it's basically the responsibility of an organization to make sure those information is confidential and it's safe uh, you know a couple of years back uh, Uh, the organizations were not taking appsec that seriously uh, it was uh, you know neglected the main reason being that you know every organization they used to think that they have got lot of security in their in the in their like in their networks firewalls ids ips so uh, they were not concentrating much on the application security part but the current day scenario is not like that if you have a weak application in secure application even if you have got the very good network security it can it will be compromised so nowadays the app uh, the organizations are concentrating on the application security as well and that's why the devsecops is getting very uh, in getting a lot of importance uh, i see a lot of organizations they are moving into devsecops and then they are integrating application security into devsecops uh, being a security professional for 8 years i have seen uh, the application security used to be a separate stream and development and devops used to be a different stream now today it's no more devops it's all devsecops security integrated into the devops process i work closely with the devsecops teams I, we don't call them devops teams right now it's devsecops teams they are not doing much into security but still they are called devsecops because they are integrating our tools into the development life cycle so we as a application team we are the owners of security tools but the devsecops teams they take care of those tools integrate those tools into the uh, uh pipelines and all so so just we'll see what are the common terminologies when we uh, talk about application security so i think most of you must be knowing uh, but but just to make sure that everybody is on the same page uh, we'll first discuss on what are those so anybody can anybody take a wild guess what is a vulnerability anybody just take a wild guess what do you know what is vulnerability just a wild guess it is like a virus kind of thing mm mm-hmm. exactly exposing data hmm but exposing data information exposing data information exactly yeah so so when i say vulnerability uh, when i say it's exposing data or uh, virus everything these are all loopholes or weaknesses that a system has got so when i say weakness so you have developed a software but it has got a small bug or something in that that is a weakness in that software um i will give you a small example simple example and then we will compare that so imagine you guys have developed a you guys have built a house very big very strong house it has got a compound wall it has got a main gate with a uh, number locking and all but one window is doesn't have a grill okay so the that's a weakness in that house so that weakness we called as vulnerability okay so what's the problem with that vulnerability anybody what's the weakness with that window without a grill 
If someone enter into the house. Exactly. So anybody can exploit, can, can use that weakness to enter into your house. So that is exploiting, taking advantage of that weakness is exploiting. So what will happen if somebody enter into your house? They can uh, gather that all information. Yes. They can. they can steal something from your house. They like, can. But first, yeah. But who enters like that? Who enters from the window? Not not thief. somebody from your family. Yes, exactly. So thief is the threat agent. So a threat agent is something or someone who can who has the capability, who has the potential to exploit that vulnerability, weakness, weakness and, and cause damage to you. Okay, so the, he's a thief. So he can enter into the through the window into your house and he can steal something from your house. So that is called theft. Theft is a threat. That is a threat you have in your house. Got it? So exposing the exploiting the vulnerability and stealing is a threat to your house. So if you see risk, what is the risk? Uh, the possibility that the thief entering your house and stealing, it may not, he may not come today, he may not come tomorrow, he may come after one month. But the risk of a threat entering your house is always there. So that is the risk. So, um, so risk is the potential of a threat getting executed is the risk. So, so we calculate risk basically like uh, probability of the threat into the loss of uh, occurrence. So if it is a it is a uh, the threat the risk of a thief uh, theft in a house so if it is like a software engineer house so obviously the thief knows there won't be anything in the house so the the chance of theft is less and uh, of, of obviously there is nothing in your house in the in, in the software engineer's house so the the loss is less so we consider it as a low risk. But if it is a businessman house, then definitely he will be having a lot of black money in his house. So the probability of theft is high. And if there is a theft and the loss of theft is also high. So we consider it as a high risk. So that's how a organization calculates a risk on every vulnerability i hope <coughs> i hope it is clear to everyone if you have guys any questions you can just ask me and next is mitigate so so what we do what we have done is the there is a the window with a, without a grill we have placed a camera in front of that window so what we have we have done is we are we did not fix the issue but we have placed a control uh, in, in front of the uh, weakness. So that is mitigating. So you are not actually fi fixing it, but you are reducing your risk. If somebody enters, you can watch it, you can alert, you will get an alert and you get, you, uh, you get alerted. So that is mitigating a risk. And then remediating is actually fixing the risk. So if you are placing a grill in the window, then th that is like fixing the issue. That is called remediating the, the risk. CV. CV is common vulnerability exposure. It's very common. Like any software, if you see any any hardware software, uh, they are got they have got some vulnerability in that. So if Whenever there is uh, they found a vulnerability in any software, what they will do is they will number that vulnerability. 
and uh, usually what they do is in it will be like the year of uh, identifying the vulnerability if, if the vulnerability is identified in 2024 then the cv id will be 2024 hyphen add a unique id uh, so, so every software, uh, what the, there is a list of vulnerabilities they identify, and these vulnerabilities will be CVs will be stored in a central database called CVDB. So anybody can go to CVDB database. You can just Google uh, CVDB and you go to the CVDB database, and then you can search for the software if you are using angular or if you are using node.js which version of it you can just search for uh, you can type in that version and it will list out all the cves that are there in that particular uh, version of angular or node.js or any any particular software so it helps you to say that okay this version has got so many cvs that means if i use that uh, well, uh, version of the software, then these are the uh, possible attacks that an attacker can execute on my application. So that's how uh, organizations should make sure that they are using the softwares which doesn't have any CVs or they have very less CVs. And next is zero day. It, it's very popular word, zero day. You must have heard in the news, zero day attacks. Anybody? Take any, any guess what is zero day? Very often you will be seeing in the in the news there is a zero day attack on particular company, particular software. Recently, last month there was a zero day on Jenkins servers that will be of your interest because you guys are working you will be working on things uh, on jenkins okay so like zero day is is a vulnerability which is there in your system or in your software hardware anywhere but it is not known to anyone so as a developer i have written an application i have written this, this program software there is a vulnerability in that but as a developer, I, I don't know. An attacker also don't know until it was exploited by somebody. Nobody knows that there is a vulnerability in that software. So it is called zero day vulnerability. So in Linux, there was a vulnerability, which it was there, there since the first release, but it got identified after 20 years. So till 20 years, nobody found that vulnerability. So when it was found, they say that they found a zero day vulnerability in Linux. And then the, uh, the Linux will uh, try develop the fix for that vulnerability. Until they create, develop the fix, they will have some alternative controls to protect it, but the fix will take time. So till the fix is developed, patch is developed, they will say that it's a zero day vulnerability. Uh, Next is encryption. Uh, so obviously, when to maintain the confidentiality of your application data, so you use encryption and decryption technologies. So it's very important from the interview point of view. Definitely, most of the interviews they will be asking what is encryption, what are the different types of encryption, uh, public key, single key, uh, asymmetric and symmetric encryptions. It's 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 a vast topic, but you guys should be aware of. What is encryption? Basically, we use encryption to you know, uh, you know, convert uh, our data into non-readable form, so that you know, if, even if the attacker uh, got the information, he, he will not be able to understand that information. He has to decrypt it, and if we, if, when we encrypt it, we use some algorithm. Uh, if, if the attacker knows that algorithm, then only he will be able to decrypt it. And then authentication. Uh, it's, it's basically the very, very important feature in application security. So it's basically authenticate the user. So if you are in a login page, if you are doing the, if you are entering user ID and password, that means you know you are the, uh, you are the uh, 
valid person to log in. But if you know the user ID, but if you are if you don't know the password of that user ID, that means you are not the authentic authentic user of that uh, application. So, and next is authorization. Most people confuse with between authentication and authorization. It's not same. Some people think it's same. It's not the same. So authorization doesn't deal with the authenticity. It doesn't check whether you are a valid person or not. Authorization happens after authentication. Once you are authenticated, then the authorization process kicks in and it will make sure uh, you have the right permissions to access that application. So then any application will have like normal user, admin user, super user, root user, so based on your access permissions, you will be given access to that application. So if a normal user, if he is able to do a privilege escalation or some kind of things, and he is able to access the admin pages, admin functionality, that means authorization is not implemented properly. So every application makes sure that you know they are implementing authentication and authorization appropriately. CIA triad. So this is actually the pillar of application or any kind of security. So basically the security, when you're implementing it, your first focus is to make sure that you are implementing confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So confidentiality. So if you are, when you are using any application, you are entering your information into that application, you make, you, Trust that the, the application will keep your co information confidential. So in your Amazon account, you are, you are saving your credit card details. So you trust that Amazon will save your credit card details safely and it will not be exposed to others. So that, that confidentiality will be maintained. So that's the responsibility of any organization to make sure that they make the, the customer information confidential. Integrity is to make sure that your information is not tampered. For example, uh, if, if you uh, you are you are so downloading a software from the internet, and if the if the software is tampered by the attacker and he has attached a malware into that software. And if you download that tampered software and if you install that in your system, then obviously the malware will give the attacker a uh, backdoor access to your system. So how to make sure that your the integrity of that software? Is, so if you are downloading a software from any 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 website, they will give you a hash code. So the hashing is a technique that the uh, that we use to make sure the the software is in uh, software integrity is maintained. So basically, what they do is they create a hash of an uh, the exe file, and then they will uh, when you download the software, you generate a hash of that software, and when you compare, both should be same. So that's how we make sure that integrity is maintained. So when I'm sending a data to someone else. They, I will generate a hash, and when he receives the data, he will also generate the hash, and we both know what's the hashing, hashing algorithm that we are using. And if the, both the hash are same, then that means the data is not uh, in, um, tampered in between. But if someone, if the attacker is able to tamper the data, obviously the hash code will change, and then that means I will come to know that you know the data has been tampered in between. So. That is integrity and availability is basically you know protection against DOS. So if if you are trying to access a banking application and and if it is not available, that means that it's not safe. You know, uh, it's of no use. Right? Every application should be available whenever it is required to be. That's why the, the, the say 99.99 percent availability. So it should be available when it's required and you know organizations make sure that they don't have any issues uh, with the dev uh, the, with the availability 
Okay, so this is how we build. These are the methodologies that we use to build security into the DevOps process. I, uh, I think we are aware of some of these. Uh, SAST, static application security. Uh, DAST, SCA, secret scanning and container scanning. There are different, there are other processes as well, but as a DevOps check ops professional, in any organization, you will be dealing with these processes. So these are the, each process will have different tools and you will be working with those tools. You have to integrate those tools into your DevOps pipeline. So SAST is static application security means, you know, uh, the tool will uh, take the source code from the application, complete source code, and it will scan the source code and then it will generate the, it will identify all the vulnerabilities that are there in that application and it will generate the report. So when when a security professional look at that report, he identifies, okay, uh, this is, he will make sure those are not false positive. If there is any false positive, he's suppressed. And if it's a genuine vulnerability, he will inform the application uh, development team that, we found so and so vulnerability, and this is how you need to fix it. And we will help the app teams to fix those vulnerabilities. DAST is a process where you know it, it doesn't need source code. It, 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 it is a test that will do on the live running applications. So it, it, it sends different kind of payloads into the application and it will try to break the application and then uh, and it will try to find out the vulnerabilities in a running application. Uh, SCA, software composition analysis. So, you know, every application, they use different third party uh, uh, components, libraries, DLLs. So these are from developed by somebody else, but you will be using that in your application. Yeah, example, Angular or Node. So if you are using Node, you don't have the source code in that. So if you want to test the, uh, if there are any vulnerabilities in that node, you since you don't have source code, you cannot do SAS on that. And since this is a service, there is no UI for that node or Angular. Uh, so you cannot do DAST on that. So if there is any vulnerability in the Angular version that you are using, it will indirectly impact your application. So how do you make sure there is no vulnerability in the Angular is using SCA. So SCA runs on the all the third party dependency files libraries that you are using in your application. And then it will identify if there is any vulnerability and it will tell you, okay, this particular library that you are using has got this vulnerability. So you will, what you will do is you will use the patched version of that well, library, or if there is no patched version, you will wait for a patched version to release by the vendor, and then you will be using that patched version of the library. So if, if the vendor is not releasing a patched version, then you have to look for an alternative library. So that's uh, basically what CV, uh, SCA is doing is, it is checking the uh, li uh, library and the version in the CVE DB. It will see there for this Angular version, is there any CVEs in the in the CVE DB? If it finds any CVE DB, um, any CVE, it will fetch that information. It will, it will show you that there is a vulnerability. Next is secret scanning. So when the application is developed, the developers they tend to hard code some secrets in their source code. It can be a password. It can be a token. It can be a key. So if this is exposed outside, uh, the attacker can use that token key and to access the system. So how do you identify that? You, it, sometimes it, it can be identified in SAST, but some of the, sometimes it may get missed. So now applications are using secret scannings. They run a secret scanning on the source code and then it will identify the keys, uh, hard-coded keys, and then it, it will tell the developer to remove that hard-coded keys from your source code. And container scanning, 
obviously nowadays everything is container kubernetes docker so we have tools to scan the containers and identify if there are any vulnerabilities that are in the in the container in the software or <clears throat> the environment specific uh, vulnerabilities so you know that you know containers they communicate with each other so uh, vms were different vms were isolated they have their own operating system so the but containers are common so you know you can one container can communicate with other container a container will uh, interact with the os so so there are a lot of if the if you always get compromised the the attacker can uh, you know communicate with the containers so this is so how to harden your containers environment so we we make sure that using the container scan there are other tech, other methodologies like penetration testing so penetration is is similar to dast but the dast will be done in the uat so it comes under devops devsecops scope but penetration testing is done in the production environment so and it, it it's black box testing kind of thing so it's not in the devsecops scope threat modeling is also a different uh, thing to make sure that the application is secure but it's done by the security architects the security review as well it's done by the security architects to make sure the whole intra infrastructure is secure but it's not you know, directly related to devops so these are the different tools that we have for uh, each uh, for sas sonar cube is very popular most of the companies or organizations they are using sonar cube uh, check marks is also very good tool but it's very expensive there are many tools dash verb suit is the most famous tool most used tool but it's very expensive so oas zap is picking up uh, it's it's very easy to integrate zap into the ci cd when compared to the verb suit so most of the companies they are planning to use zap in their uh, ci cd sca we have black duck j frog sync so sync is uh, very very popular nowadays secret scanning they have truffle hog bitbucket git guardian and for container scanning we have tools so every application every organization will not use all the tools they will pick up one tool for sas one tool for dast sca so it depends on the budget and the the size of the organization the what they were the they pick up the tool so it it doesn't matter we for you guys so any tool if they are using any tool it will they will be integrating that tool into their into your ci cd pipeline you will be integrating that uh, you will create a task for that sas task in your pipeline and you will trigger that so when to trigger is also decided by the organization whether it is on commit or when is pull request that you guys will be deciding and it will you will be you know writing your pipelines based on that so this is how the secure sdlc the software development life cycle so you know what are the various phases of software development life cycle right so the requirement phase design phase development phase testing production and maintenance phase so how do we integrate security in sdlc is basically uh, so in the requirement phase so in the requirement phase what the the app team does is they they they, they gather all the requirements so apart from their business uh, requirements they have to work on the security requirements as well so if they are using a you no know, uh, if they are use, using the credit card details then they have to make sure that this credit card how they are saving the credit card details how they are transferring the credit card details so these things has to be analyzed in the requirement phase and uh, they have to incorporate this. so really this kind of analysis as a spent teams the uh, security team what we do is we make sure that security requirements are in place and then 
once we are, we make sure that you know all the security requirements are there then we give a sign off to the design phase so in the design phase the architects will then will develop the design models and then, and then once the designs are ready they will do the threat modeling and identify all the defects so once the design phase is completed then the development phase will start and the app teams actually start coding the uh, application. So they make sure they are using the secure coding standards and everything. And once the coding is done, we will perform the SAST analysis. So the SAST, they will identify the vulnerabilities in the, in the code. And then once the SAST is done, it will go to the testing phase. In the testing phase, we do the DAST, dynamic analysis testing. It's pre-production and uh, okay, in the development phase, we can uh, implement the SCA and secret scanning and all in the, in the development phase as well. So after the dynamic testing in the testing phase, then it will be moved to the production. In the production, we will do the pen testing. And then it, it, in the maintenance phase, we, we just monitor the application and uh, you know I, we identify all the bugs in the real-time environment, analyze those, and then we again start the planning and requirements. So this is the general um, life cycle, SDL, SDLC life cycle. But nowadays it's all secure SDLC, no more SDLC. So if we see the same thing in our Dev, DevSecOps. So in the plan phase is the requirement phase. So we do all the security gathering and threat modeling, everything in the planning phase. And in the build phase, we do all the uh, SAST, SCA, uh, checks, secret scanning, everything will be done in the build phase. The dash will be done in the in the test phase, in deployment, so container scanning, everything will be done in the deployment phase, and then operate, operate will monitor the logs and that. Uh, in the next is the uh, monitoring phase. If they, we use different test SIM tools uh, like Splunk and all to monitor the logs, and then again we'll start the planning phase. So this is the general uh, DevSecOps. Okay, so now we'll see how we are implementing the security in the DevSecOps pipeline. So if we have a developer here, he's, he is developing an application. So once he develops this, uh, return some code, what he does is he will push it into the source code management system. This is your Git or Git. So imagine if this is Git. He pushed his code into the Git. So what your Jenkins will do, it will pull the code from your Git repository, and then it it in the pipeline you have uh, you have written a task to do SAST, static static scan. So now uh, it will trigger a SAST scan. It will take the code and it will uh, analyze the code and it will identify all the vulnerabilities and then the vulnerability will be pushed into a centralized vulnerability management platform this is basically a database sql or postgres based, depending upon the size of the organization and number of applications they will decide the database vulnerability management platform and will store those vulnerabilities into the into the platform. So here uh, I mentioned only SAS scan, but in the pipeline it will be like first SAS, then when SAS is successfully completed, it will do a secret scan. And once the secret scanning is completed, it will trigger SCA and then SAS dash dash. So it you it depends on the on your pipeline, it will trigger all the all the tasks and then it it will uh, Push the vulnerabilities identified in all the scans to the uh, vulnerability management dashboard. So, so here, uh, there from from once the vulnerability is pushed into the plat management platform, the trigger it will alert the developer first. It will alert the developer that it will say that you know your code has got a vulnerability. But if imagine if there is a severity one vulnerability, high severity 
critical vulnerability then it will alert everybody your team manager your leads everybody will get an alert saying that you know this guy developed an application which has got a severity vulnerability and everybody will come and sit on your head so that's how it is so then the developer will you know uh, work on those vulnerabilities he will try to fix the vulnerability he uses the different uh, uh, security uh, methodologies to fix those and he will once the bug is fixed he will push the code again into the source code management system and and then again he will the jenkins will take that code scan it and then this is a cycle that runs every every time so whenever the developer commits his code into the source code management system the jenkins will trigger and this is the general uh, cycle that happens in a in the in any organization of course the only thing is that number of services will change organization to organization but otherwise the process will be the same okay so i think uh, this is the last slide so this is basically uh, what are the common vulnerabilities that we are identify so uh, owasp is a is a open web application consortium where you know they, they will publish all the uh, top risks so if you go to owasp website you just type owasp in the google and it will take you to the owasp website it will display it, it has got um uh, it it has got a lot of uh, documentation for how to develop applications secure coding guidelines secure testing guidelines for you know web applications for apis for mobile application for cloud applications so far it's a one stop shop for all security uh, this thing and it it's widely considered in any industry so we follow this so this oh, the oas they release the top 10 vulnerabilities every 4 years 3 to 4 years so last they released in 2021 and according to 2021 there is uh, release these are the top vulnerabilities that are there in every application and uh, and organization make sure that they don't have they fix all the top 10 vulnerabilities in their applications so the top is for one is the broken access control this is basically authentic uh, authorization issues so make you no know, you yeah, see most of the applications has got authorization issues so there is a chance of privilege escalation and they get a uh, admin access so application developed in any organization they have to fix make sure that you know they don't have access control they have implemented proper access control to fix this access control issues cryptographic failures that means you know they are not implementing the uh, encryption properly so are they are using an algorithm which is which is compromised or weak algorithm or they are not <clears throat> using the public key and private key properly so they have to make sure that they are implementing a proper cryptographic uh, algorithms injection is very common so you must have heard of sql injection or cross site uh, xss cross site scripting command injection there are a lot of so many types of injections so basically you know organizations they give very you know lot of importance to identify the injection uh, vulnerabilities because they are very common it's very simple to exploit a injection vulnerability so so very easy and very very deadly so that's why uh, organizations they they try to you know detect all the injection vulnerabilities and remediate those vulnerabilities next is in secure design this is a new vulnerability actually so make sure that you know if your design itself is not correct not proper then obviously you are going to develop a, a you know insecure uh, application so if you if you do a proper designing and then you start your uh, development then obviously the number of vulnerabilities or issues in your application will be less so that's the intention to add this insecure design 
So they uh, now all the organizations they started using threat modeling and different uh, you know uh, design level uh, security to make sure that you know your design is perfect and then they start the development process. Security misconfiguration. So now a lot of applications are in cloud, so Azure. So the configuration, if you're not setting your configuration properly, if you're using you know default passwords and default uh, settings, then the attacker will take advantage of that and he will try to compromise your application. Access vulnerability, outdated components. So that's what I said, if you are using a library, which is very old, then obviously there will be a lot of vulnerabilities in that in those libraries. So you <clears throat> attacker will use that vulnerabilities to exploit your application. So that's why always you have to use the latest uh, libraries. Identification of authentication failures. This is basically your authentication. You are, if you are not using single sign on or you are not using two factor authentication, then definitely your application is can be compromised. And software and data integrity failures. So this mainly talks about the integrity when you say uh, when this is data when you're saving your data in your database and if somebody attacker can uh, you know, modify those data or steal those data, uh, then integrity issue. So you have to make sure that you know software and data cannot be tampered. Uh, security logging and monitoring. So definitely there should be in like audit logging, application logging. There are different types of loggings. You have to implement all those loggings in your application and make sure they are safe. And SSRF, it's an advanced to attack, very common nowadays. So uh, it's it, the fix is not that easy, so that's why they have added that into the uh, top ten. You don't have, you guys don't have to worry about that. It's basically a, a application security engineer's problem, but so it, it's like a, uh, it's a vulnerability that will uh, trigger a forged request to a server, and they will be, you know, server will think that you are sending a genuine request, but it's not a genuine request, and it will try to execute that request. So basically, that's an advanced attack that happens. So these are like common in web application. We have the same similar kind of list for APIs, because nowadays, uh, most of the applications are microservice applications, API based, so REST, REST applications. So, so they are now releasing the API top 10. So similarly, you have for mobile as well, mobile top 10, and you have cloud top 10 as well. So these are the different vulnerabilities. It's good to, you know, basic understanding of your, uh, of the vulnerabilities because you guys are now DevSecOps guys. So Sec is there in your profile. So in an interview, you have to be open to security questions as well. So, so you just to, basic understanding of any vulnerability will be good for you in the interviews. I think that's it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, any, anything you can guys can ask me. No, sir. Okay. So, yeah, if you guys have anything, you can just ping me. You know, yeah, definitely can reach out to me anytime. I'll be there to help you guys. So I think uh, this is the first session. So the next session I will, will be planning in such a way that you know we'll take a tool like SAS tool, uh, Sonar Cube or something, and we will you know we'll see how the Sonar works, or we can see a ZAP or a Dash tool and see how the Dash work. So I will plan that, and we'll uh, we'll meet some in the next session. So so we'll we'll see how the Sonar Cube uh, actually does this, scan the code and identifies the vulnerabilities. What are the different features that are there in Sonar Cube? So we can do we can do that in the next session. So I think if you guys don't have any questions, then you can. Wrap up. Thank you, guys. Thank you, sir. Very to Mr. Khan, sir. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Deepu. Uh,
uh, for uh, um, walking us through. Okay, I really appreciate your efforts and time, and uh, really thankful to you, Deepu. Awesome, and thanks for you know uh, your uh, giving your early hours. Uh, help <laughs> no, understand. no problem, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you for giving Hi. me this opportunity, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, sir. That's yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, if possible, can we get uh, that application security doc DevOps Corps document? Uh, because of we want to recap. Uh, you are asking for this pre presentation. Yeah, yeah, do this presentation document. Yeah, yeah, I will, I will share it to Vikas, and Vikas will be will share it with you all guys. Not, not an issue. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Oh. Great. So, uh, so just one question: uh, Can I know? Yeah. Uh, can I focus on only Sonar queue for the uh, code scanning, mm -hmm. or else have mm -hmm. to be learn the all tools for uh, which is for that type of setups? See, it it's not in your hand. It's your organization that decides what tool they will be using it. And if you are working on Sonar queue, and tomorrow they say I don't want Sonar queue, I will bring uh, something else. Then you have to work on that. But it doesn't matter for you guys because what you do is to is just integrating that tool into the pipeline, the, right? When just to trigger the scan, you will be working on, on your pipeline. So that ap application security, you know, we work on that tool. So our headache to learn the tool and understand the tool and implement that tool. So from a DevSecOps perspective or from your perspective, you will not you don't want to understand the tool as it is. You just have to work on how to integrate that tool into your pipeline. So it it, it depends on, uh, but good, good to have an understanding of the tool. So if you, Sonar Cube is mostly used. So if, if you have idea of one tool, it, it, all the tool does the same thing. So only the, the scope is different. So some does at a small level and some does check marks does at a very huge level. So, so it's basically the scope, but the functionality wise, if you understand one tool, then you can work on any tool. You, you it's, it's simple. It, it, the functionality is simple. So you don't have to worry about that, which tool the organization is using. It's only thing is, you, are, you, you know, you have an idea of SAST or not. You, tool, you don't worry about the tool. You just say, I, I know SAS. I understand how the SAS works. If you interview anybody, ask you, you say, I know how the SAS works, how to integrate SAS into the pipeline. That's what you don't talk about the tools. You talk about the process. Is okay. it clear? Is it okay? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, guys. And thank you. We'll meet uh, some other day with some other topic. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye, sir.